Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving into some old world artifacts and I wanted to do this because as we research old world history, as more and more people, more inquisitive minds, throw in their two cents into researching the real history of mankind, we begin to find different artifacts that come to the limelight that basically bring us into a different part of the narrative that we have not traversed yet. And in looking into these currently accepted narratives, we can dissect the anomalies and find the things that don't quite make sense. The one thing that we do have that we can put our hands on, that we can still visualize and view today and know, at least in part, that they are authentic and that's what leads to them being out of place are these artifacts. Basically, these have come forward and brought scientists to many more questions than answers. These artifacts and the locations they are found and the currently accepted narrative behind them will leave you basically questioning the official timeline. That's what I'm looking to do with my photographs and all the other people with channels like mine that dive into the old world. Everyone's looking to determine what the true history is. And we're looking to become a sort of hive mind of knowledge where you can jump from one channel to the next and hopefully these topics will overlap and they'll begin to paint a bigger picture for you. So let's get right into it. Let's look at these artifacts today as opposed to old world photographs and let's see what these current narrative timelines have to say about these out of place artifacts that reshape human history. So let's start with the wolf's egg iron, also known as the Salzburg cube. Essentially, I'll keep these deductions as brief as possible. The Salzburg cube is a small cube that was found in Austria the whole way back in 1885. It was found buried in ignite rock, dated roughly 20 million years old. The cube, as it's called, resembles to me a brain or some sort of feature of a living creature. When first discovered, the Salzburg cube was determined to be of alien origin, most likely a meteorite from outer space which landed in the rock millions of years earlier. The Salzburg cube weighs approximately 785 grams with measurements of 2 and 3 fourths inches by 2 and 3 fourths inches by 1 and 3 fourths inches. Two sides are convex, forming this sort of brain shape, with a deep groove seemingly carved into the object. The cube has a specific gravity of 7.75, and in the late 1800s, it was a key piece of scientific evidence towards alien life. However, throughout the years, samples have been cut off the object and evidently lost, and tests have apparently been inconclusive. Modern science claims the Salzburg cube is in fact a piece of modern iron that somehow fell into the ancient rock during the excavations in the late 1800s and somehow became embedded deep inside. 20 million year old alien artifacts that are discredited in modern times? How about 3 billion year old human artifacts? Let us now discuss the Klerksdorp spheres of South Africa. This one is still very much being suppressed it seems due to the sheer nature of this discovery. The Klerksdorp spheres having multiple dozens being found, some would say over a hundred and some would say over a thousand, although it depends on what terms you use to define what exactly makes these up. To this day, they are spherical objects that were found inside 3 billion year old pyrophyllite deposits in South Africa. They look almost exactly, for lack of a better term, like yo-yos. They even have carved incisions, almost always creating lines of symmetry within these spheres. The spheres range from half a centimeter up to 10 centimeters, all displaying what the layman would see as craftsmanship. For years, these objects were believed to be man-made, shattering the illusion of the current timeline. However, modern-day scientists within the last 20 years now say that the Klerksdorp spheres are actually naturally occurring. However, they continue to be found in pockets of unaltered pyrophyllite dating billions of years old. Are these the fossils of a once living species? Are these human artifacts? The color of the specimen studied by Paul Heinrich range from dark reddish brown to red to dusky red. The colors of these objects composed of pyrite is not known exactly to this day. However, all of the specimens or all of these objects which were cut open by Heinrich exhibited an extremely well-defined radial structure terminating on either the center or centers of the Klerksdorp spheres. These objects exhibit well-defined and parallel 
latitudinal grooves or ridges. Even specimens consisting of intergrown flattened spheres exhibit these grooves. Naturally occurring or man-made, this is an argument which bleeds over into our discussion of ancient architecture as well. Could a major cataclysmic event, something which shifted the very plane on which mankind roamed, could that event have literally shifted and moved the layers that hold together our earthly plane? Could millions, even billions of year old rock have been flipped, molded from a molten form or liquid form and then reformed? And could this event, this liquefaction, of the earthly plane have been the cataclysm or the great flood, the flipping of the poles, the ice age that were written about in all of the ancient cultures. The last object I want to discuss in today's video about out of place artifacts is the Antikythera mechanism. This is said to be an ancient computer, the first computer. It was found off the coast of Antikythera, Greece within an ancient Roman shipwreck. This occurred in the year 1901, essentially at the bottom of the ocean within a deteriorating old ancient Roman ship buried under layers of the ocean floor in a lump or underwater mound was found a large box and within this box was a wooden frame. This was the frame for the Antikythera mechanism. Now within this frame were three main pieces, but after they were brought to the surface, these three main pieces were broken down further into 82 identifiable working parts that made up the device. Of these 82 parts that still remained intact, four of them were very large gears, the largest of which contained 223 teeth. If you're unfamiliar, 223 and 322, its inverse, are vastly important to the Freemasons, but I digress. The Antikythera mechanism also contained inscriptions on nearly every single working part, as well as on the outer wooden case. Some of these inscriptions were so small, and some say this is because they were so weathered, that a microscope had to be used just to read them. Using x-ray tomography, high resolution scanning, and modern computers hooked to these microscopes, in 2008, it was determined that the Antikythera mechanism originally had at least 37 bronze gears. It is suggested that this mechanism was created in Rhodes and was pillaged by the Romans to celebrate the victory of Julius Caesar. However, this is speculative at best. Sadly, from the year 1901 onward, the Antikythera mechanism was not properly cared for or treated, and thus it has suffered significant deterioration since its discovery. However, the Antikythera mechanism seems to throw a relative kink into the history of mankind. While we see astrolabs in the Middle Ages of advanced construction, the Antikythera mechanism essentially served the exact same purpose hundreds if not thousands of years earlier. The Antikythera mechanism followed the movements of the sun and the moon through the zodiac, predicting eclipses and identifying irregular orbits. This is unique because what was found inside the device as well, it was an amalgamation of many different ancient beliefs. And yet, it basically accounts for the measurement of time that we are still using today. We have calendars and timekeeping. They varied widely from culture to culture, especially in prehistory or in BC times. And yet, the Antikythera mechanism was divided into exactly 12 cycles, all 12 signs of the zodiac the 12 signs that we still follow today, which seems to have stemmed from the Babylonian time period. This mechanism also had a rotatable outer ring to determine the date, marked off with the months and days of the Egyptian Sothic calendar, which includes exactly 12 months of 30 days each, plus five intercalary days, equating to exactly 365 days to a year, which obviously we still adhere to today. The action of turning the hand crank on the Antikythera mechanism would also cause all the interlock gears within the mechanism to rotate, resulting in the simultaneous calculation of the position of the sun, the moon, the moon phase, the eclipse cycle, the calendar cycle, and perhaps all of the locations of the known planets as well. Furthermore, the mechanism had additional dials which not only allowed the conversion between lunar and solar calendars, 
as to be used by any culture, but it also contained additional gears which would measure important events of the Metonic calendar, including the eclipses, solar and lunar, and the holidays like the ancient Olympic Games. The mechanism also allowed for conversion between the ancient cycles, known as the Calypic cycle, which is 76 years, the Metonic cycle, which is 19 years, and the Stop Me If You've Heard This Name Before, the Sorrow cycle, which is 223 years. Essentially, we still haven't, to this day, identified all the computation abilities of this mechanism. Scientists say that Antikythera mechanism, this ancient computer or predictive device, is perhaps the most advanced mechanism or device ever created until the 15th century. We're told the Antikythera device exceeds all Dark Age abilities previously thought to exist while predating that time period by at least 500 to 1000 years. It wouldn't be until into the Enlightenment, the Renaissance, that we would begin to see devices even remotely comparable to this one in Europe. What do we make of all this? Do these artifacts do anything for your personal viewpoint of the history of mankind? The proof is right before our eyes. While the vestiges of ancient populations may not instantly come to the forefront, and while centuries of convoluting by historians paid to construct a new timeline have seemingly hidden these gems or undermined their importance, we as a society in 2022 have the ability now more than ever to achieve levels of understanding never before achieved by mankind. We can use our reasoning matched by statistics, facts, photographs, first-hand materials, and most of all, ancient artifacts to deduce things about our ancestral past which have not been achievable by the generations before us. We will use this new ability to question the constructs placed upon our history, and that's what we're looking to do on my channel. So hopefully today you enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe if you're not already. We recently hit 50,000 subscribers. It's such a milestone, and I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It truly means a lot to me to reach that milestone, and I hope you will continue to join me as we keep diving into the old world history, dissecting it, and trying to decipher all that it has to offer. Thank you again, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, y'all.